So here's four things my best benzo clients have in common. A, positive attitude. And this is probably the most difficult of all the, all the things I could ever ask anyone to do going through this, uh, is they keep a positive attitude. Because things look so dreary. They look so fatalistic. They look, you know, just hopeless. And you don't feel good. You feel horrible. And you're panicking. And you have depression. And your family don't understand. And your job, you might have lost it. And your house. And it's so catastrophic, I know, that to keep a positive attitude just seems almost deranged. It's almost silly. It's like, are you serious right now? Keep a positive attitude? I'm going through hell. Hey, I absolutely get it. I've been there. I get it. But a self-defeating attitude is not the answer either. I mean, what, are the, what is the alternative? Becoming in a blank, depressive kind of level, just where you kind of walk around defeated? Is it getting angry? Is it feeling hopeless? I mean, have, these, have, have those things ever helped anybody recover from anything? No, the ones that do the best are the ones that just have this positive attitude. And I mean, they're able to reframe everything in a way that helps them. It's an evolutionary process here. It's, I mean, an evolutionary instinct that helps, helps us heal uh, in terms of mental, mental illness and mental health uh, concerns. It's, it's ability to look at your situation and not just see it as a problem or just catastrophic thing. Why did it happen to me? But as a opportunity to heal, I mean, to, uh, to, to grow, to become a better version of yourself. Because growth happens through pain. That's a fact, especially, especially spiritual growth. It, it doesn't happen when things are going great and the birds are chirping and the sun's out and we're sitting in a field of flowers. No, it happens in hell. That's, I mean, that is just the uncomfortable, uh, inconvenient truth of being a human. I mean, that is the ex- existential, uh, cr- you know, crucifix that some of us have to carry, so to speak, uh, is that our growth most certainly will rely on going through painful situations. Now, I'm not saying uh, your life couldn't have been great without this. I, I, I get that. I'm not saying, hey, you should be thankful that this happened to you. No. But what I'm saying is, don't fight the currents. Don't don't harvest anger. Don't allow yourself to give in to that despair. The clients that do the best are the ones that are able to look at the situation and say, look, I'm going through hell, but you know what? I'm going to learn more about myself through this. I'm going to figure out, you know, I had anxiety before taking the benzo. I'm going to conquer that after the benzo. I'm going to show those doctors wrong. And uh, I'm just going to become a stronger person. I'm going to use this time I have to sit down and put a magnifying glass on myself and start highlighting things I never liked, things that I did wrong, things that I could do better, and I'm going to start working on them. I'm going through a, a, a process, a cathartic process of refinement and evolution. Those people that are able to reframe all of that stuff, you know, through positive attitude, do so much better. Their moods lift, their, in, their hope, their inspiration, their energy levels, everything is accelerated. I mean, so much to the point that if I could show it to you and quantify it, you know, through stats, you would say, I need to do this, even if I don't believe in it, even if I need to fake it till I make it and pretend to be positive and things like that. Who cares? Who cares? I'm not, you don't, you don't have to buy it, but just try to be positive and watch what happens. Watch, I mean, I mean, this is true, again, without, a lot of this stuff is true beyond Benzo, which is why there's more power in these things, I think. We can see the value in them. I mean, go through your day without Benzos, without ever going through any of this, and just be negative versus be positive, and watch how your day can completely transform. So, positive attitude's huge. Uh, the second thing is fierce daily commitment, you know, these people are the ones that are getting up, uh, they're exercising whatever they could at the day, can at the day, even if it's walking to the mailbox, mailbox or back. They're, you know, practicing good hygiene. They're practicing a good diet. They're making sure they get enough sun, sunlight for vitamin D so they can ward off that depression. They're doing some gradual exposure. They're staying off the, the some of the doom and gloom support, quote unquote, support groups. Um, they're they're not sitting on a phone every day talking to nine different clients about how they're never going to heal. I mean, th- these people do the hard work, and they do it daily. And and I have, you know, the utmost respect for all my clients and anyone who is able to do this because I know how hard it is. 
It is the hardest damn thing in the planet, right? To keep positive attitude and to have a fierce commitment daily, it is tough. But the thing with, you know, fierce daily commitment is after like 30 days or something of doing that, this new routine, uh, just new, pro you know, well, it becomes a routine is what I mean to say. So it gets a little easier, you know, if you, once you can get up and, and sort of create this routine of I, every morning I wake up and maybe I have this light breakfast that's um, not going to mess up my stomach. I mean, staying away from all the bacon and grease and things that are already going to upset your, uh, excuse me, it's going to upset your already upset uh, stomach. And I'm going to go outside, I'm going to do some walking, I'm going to go out in the sun. You know, you practice lifestyle, uh, lifestyle changes. And if you, after 30, 60 days, it just becomes a routine, it becomes easier. So that that's good to know. So, you know, if you're doing that and you're, you know, seven to 10 days in, you're going, this is hell, I'm not doing this anymore. Well, it gets easier, guys. So fierce commitment daily. Uh, I can't say enough about that. And uh, abilities to surrender. Ability to surrender is huge. And I, I, you know, I don't want to hammer on this one again, because I, I did this and I just talked about this in another video, but there's a difference between surrendering uh, to the moment, surrendering to your condition and giving up. And I do not mean to say give up. I just mean to say, look, this is out of my hands. I need to stop fighting mentally and emotionally with things that I cannot change. And I need to focus on the things I can change because there are things I can change. There are things I can be doing. Getting up right now, turn this video off and go sit out in the sunlight for 30 minutes will promote uh, healthy levels of vitamin D and help ward off some of that depression and thereby decrease your overall anxiety and, and negative symptoms. You can do that right now. And some of you will do that. And some of you will go, uh, I, I don't feel like it. I can't. I don't want to. It's hot out. It's, uh, you know, I just can't. I don't feel good enough. And I hear, I hear you. I feel you. It, it, I never said any of this was going to be easy. Benzo is not easy anyway. But it, the ability to surrender is going to be life transformative in this moment. I mean, it's going to be transformative anyway. It's the, it's the key feature being taught in Eastern philosophies and religion like Zen Buddhism is to surrender to the moment. Give up control. And if you have OCD or just benzo-induced OCD, you know giving up control and, and being comfortable with uncertainty is damn near impossible. But that's the one thing you need, actually. That's the one thing that breaks the compulsion is to just come to terms with it. I don't know if I'm going to get better. Dave says I will. A lot of people on the internet are getting better. Some people say they I won't. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is I can get up today and I can do every damn thing I can to promote healing. And I can engage in that and I can take it day by day. And in 30 days, if I can say I'm even 2% better, that's hope. And in the next 30 days, if I'm even 1% better, that's hope. We will keep digging until we get through and we get back to ourselves. So so uh, these are just some things that my clients uh, that have done the best have all had in common. Positive attitude, fierce commitment daily, uh, ability to surrender. And, I'll, and, and then finally, they listen and are able to implement advice. Because, you know, look, you can have all the greatest advice in the world, but if you can't, uh, you know, take that advice and implement it in your life, then what, what value is it? You know, and unfortunately, I do have clients like that. I have clients like that. I've had clients, and I'm not dumping on them. I, I understand why uh, it is so difficult because, A, because of the symptoms, A, because of the uncertainty, or B, because of the uncertainty, you know, I get it that it's like, look, Dave says I need to go exercise, but it's too hard. I don't know. But the problem is not doing these things. Uh, you're always going to get the same results that you've already had. If you don't change anything, nothing will change, quite literally. So the uncertainty is uh, is paralyzing you from committing to these really, really challenging things I'm asking of you. But by not doing them, you are certainly not going to get any different results. In fact, the only results you can hope for is whatever's been sliding off the tracks, whatever symptom uh, of depression or anxiety that's been getting worse will continue to get worse. That, that much you can be certain of that to a point. And they will get worse and worse and worse. You have to fight against it. You have to. 
So the clients that are able to hear me, and even if they, and I can hear sometimes the skepticism, I don't know, Dave, you're saying I should uh, do exposure? I don't know. I've been reading on different forums. They say that I should just lay in bed and, and rest and that my body's healing and I need to just heal. So I don't know. It's counterproductive to what you're saying. All right, well, then do that. But if you're coming to me and you're asking for my advice, and it's not that different at all from Dr. Heather Ashton's advice, you got to take the advice. Try it. You know, I had clients that uh, I could not get to go outside for five minutes a day. And they would sit up in dark rooms. This is very common. They'd sit up in their dark rooms, and you know, close the blinds, bury their head under the blanket, and basically play on their phone and, and read, you know, forums all day. And I'd say, just five minutes, just go out there five. And I just could not get them to do it. And their symptoms, I had to watch as their symptoms would just keep creeping up and getting worse. But finally, they snap, and they and they would, you know, that you know, you can only when your back's up against the wall. I mean, eventually, we we will get desperate. We'll try things, and they start doing some of the things I tell them, and I watch how quickly it starts having a transformative effect. And I want to say, look, write that down, record this, remember this, because later your mind's going to try to convince you not to do this again because it it sucks, it, it hurts, it's painful, it's difficult. And so our mind's constantly looking for the path of uh, least resistance. So it's going to try to convince us again. Eh, Dave's crazy. Don't do that. You don't need to sit outside. You're going to, you're, you know, they'll start telling you lies. Hey, if you uh, try to expose, you're probably just going to make yourself worse, right? So to reiterate, uh, four things my best clients have in common: positive attitude, fierce commitment daily, abilities to surrender, and the ability to hear good advice, and then implement that advice. To really to really take a chance on it, I guess is what I'm trying to tell you. To take a chance on the unknown. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and listening. Please click the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the content. And be sure to check out my book on Amazon, The Powers Manual, Benzo Guide to Recovery.